We're given a circuit as shown in 4.14a. This is the one that we're given. B and C is what we're going to be looking at. So for this case, our R is equal to 10 kilo ohms. That's the resistor right here. The power supply, which is our V plus, has a DC value of 10 volts. So we can write this here, and this is going to be 10 kilo ohms, on which it is superimposed at a 60 hertz sinusoidal of one voltage peak amplitude. This signal component of the power supply voltage is an imperfection in the power supply design. It is known as the power supply ripple. We're gonna look at this more later. We're gonna calculate both the DC voltage of our diode and the amplitude of the sine wave appearing across it. We can assume that the diode is gonna have a 0.7 voltage drop at one milliamp current. So at our one milliamp, our voltage drop across this is going to be equal to 0 0.7. And this is not the VD itself, it's just the voltage for our diode. Now, considering the DC quantities only, we can assume, again, like it said, that our VD, so we are assuming actually, because this is the voltage across the diode. And it doesn't matter anyways, because voltages in parallel are the same. We'll write this as 0 0.7 volts. And we're going to calculate the diode DC current. So to calculate our diode DC current, we want to find something that's close to this one milliamp. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's close or not. Well, it does, but the way that we're going to solve it is we're gonna set our ID equal to the source voltage, which is our power supply, V plus, minus the other voltage, the voltage of the diode, which is VD. And this is divided by the resistance in between them. And so if we write this out, we are going to have it equal to a one or I'm sorry, a 10 minus a 0 0.7. This is in volts. Underneath this, we have our 10 kilo ohms. We're gonna get approximately 0 0.93 milliamps. And this is equal to our ID. So we can circle this right here. So our ID is found, it wants us to calculate both, and then we can highlight this, the DC voltage of our diode and the amplitude of the sine wave signal across it. So first we have our ID. Now, we can rewrite it like this. We found our current flowing over the diode. We know the voltage across the diode. And so rewriting it like this, we're going to actually, for simplicity, write it like how we have in part C, where we have a resistor, we have the source voltage, we have this diode that's going to act as a resistor. We want to find the resistance of our diode. And then we have our VD right here as well. So since our value that we found 0.93 milliamps, very close to one milliamp, the diode voltage will be very close to our assumed value of 0.7 volts. At this operating point, the diode incremental resistance, RD, is the following. So we want to find our RD. This is similar to what we've done previously. We'll call this step one, call this step two. RD, and what I mean previously is by using Ohm's law. So we are going to have our voltage here, our V, I will label these as part one and part two. Now, to find the resistance of our diode, we're gonna be looking at the diode itself. And the resistance of the diode is specifically the Ohm's law, which is voltage, but not just any voltage, the voltage at the room temperature for our diode. And this is going to be divided by the current. So we have voltage over current, and this is equal to resistance. So we can have VT over the ID of our diode. Now, VT, room temperature, is gonna be about 26. Uh, in the book, it flip-flops between 25 and 26. Here, for this example, it uses 25, so we're gonna have 25 volts divided by our ID, which is going to be 0 0.93, and then we have milliamps here. Dividing this out, we're gonna get approximately 26.9 ohms. So this is the resistance of our diode. Now we want to find the signal voltage across the diode, and this can be found from the small signal equivalent circuit and this is in 4.4, this is where we use our C, 4.4C. Here our Vs, which is the source voltage, denotes the 60 hertz one peak sinusoidal voltage component of V plus. That's the positive the power supply. And Vd is the corresponding signal. It's going to be right here. And it is um, across the diode. Using the voltage divider, we can provide the peak amplitude of VD as follows. Using this, we can find the peak amplitude of VD. So we'll write this as step three. We're gonna have VD 
and this is our peak, we can set this equal to, and remember, voltage divider. We want to find um, the voltage that we are using, that we want to find. We set it on the equal side, and then we have our source voltage. So this is going to be our Vs, and then inside of here, we have to do something with the resistors. Now the resistors, we're going to be looking at which one the voltage that we are trying to find for is over. This happens to be our RD. So we are going to have our RD on top, and then underneath this, we just have the resistors added together. So this is just going to be RD plus our R. And we know our RD, we found it to be 26.9 ohms. And we know that our R is going to be 10 kilo ohms, because this was given to us. Now I made a mistake right here, I put 26.9 ohms when it should be 26.9 kilo ohms. Big difference, so we're going to plug that into there, we're going to plug that into here as well. So we have 26.9 kilo ohms over 26.9 kilo ohms plus 10 kilo ohms. The kilo ohms can cancel this out when we plug this into our calculator. We know our voltage source is going to be 1 volt, so when we put this all together, we're going to get about 2.68 millivolts. And that is going to be our VD peak, the voltage for the diode. Since the value is quite small, our use of the si small signal model of our diode is justified and this problem is complete.